Thank you very much, Christine, and our panelists on the physical accessibility and transport session. Without a doubt, it's one of the issues that has advanced the most in terms of accessibility. However, there are still significant barriers that need to be overcome. To finish the day, we'd like to invite you to enjoy our last session, Access to Culture. The in experts that we've invited will analyze the use of technology to bring access to culture to everyone and guarantee the rights of all to, for access to leisure and recreation. For this conversation, we will have the presence of our moderator, Sonia Garcia Freni, who is part of the International Biennial of the Fundación ONCE. It's an initiative that looks to recognize and disseminate the work of artists with disabilities, as well as to promote their access and participation in the art market. She will be joined by Claudia Wernick, the founder of Escola de Gente, a Brazilian NGO that has developed the BEMCA application that presents all of the cultural events in the area and their accessibility characteristics. They will be joined by Francisca Florenzano, the managing director of Fundación Corpartes, a Chilean foundation that works to improve accessibility to culture for all. We'll also hear from Alexander Jensen of Subreader, which is a Danish application that reads subtitles out loud for movies and television series. And finally, we'll be accompanied by Stefan Lebonois, a representative of the Valuable 500, an initiative that looks to promote inclusion at the managerial level throughout the world. Enjoy the session. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here, and thank you to Sierra Project for Latin America for inviting Fundación ONCE to be part of this event on accessibility and ICT. This panel is about access to culture so that people with disabilities can have full participation in the cultural world thanks to technological advances. Before listening to our panelists, I'd like to introduce myself and who I am and what my initiative is. My name is Sonia Farri, and I work in the cultural department at the ONCE Foundation in Spain. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our ONCE so that you have a bit of context. ONCE was founded uh, as part of the initiative, and then it founded Fundación ONCE, one of its cultural foundations, and then El Unión. ONCE was founded in 1938 to improve the life of people with visual impairments and disabilities. It works. After 50 years, it founded Fundación ONCE, which is, looks to raise money through the lottery so that the lives of people with disabilities can be improved through labor inclusion, training, and accessibility. Then we have our union representative, Il Union, which works with people with disabilities in hotels and other aspects of tourism. Together, we make up Fundación ONCE so that we can improve the life of people with disabilities and their participation in society. In the next slide, we can see that within Fundación ONCE, we have the organization that looks to promote accessibility. It is fundamental for 10% of the population. It will make the entire population comfortable, but it is necessary for 40% of the population. When we thought of this, we're looking about targeting not just a small portion of the population, but everyone. In terms of culture, it is a fundamental right. And Fundación ONCE works with the Department of Culture in order to improve access to physical spaces. And we use technology to do so. I've been working there since 2007, and I wasn't really aware of just how much exclusion there was of people with disabilities, even though I myself am someone with a disability. I am deaf, and often I would try to have to, people, I needed them to repeat things for me, I would try to figure out, to fill in the gaps in a creative way. 
And so I've always had to lean in to be able to hear conversations or listen to or read the subtitles. In the next slide, we'll see some of the ways that we have been able to overcome uh, some of the difficulties of access to culture. We have the Contemporary Art Biennale that began in 2006. This is on the next slide. My mouse isn't working very well today, I'm sorry. So one of our greatest uh, cultural developments is the Contemporary Art Biennale that looks to increase labor inclusion of artists with disabilities. It also looks to provide access to culture for people with disabilities and eliminate the barriers to creation and appreciation of the arts for people with disabilities. It is a collective effort that looks to bring together visual artists with and without disabilities to create this exhibition. We look to be able to hold different types of events, including uh, different training events and workshops between people with and without disabilities to participate with the artists. And they can participate regardless of their capabilities. And so we also look to increase the use of technology in our cultural events, for example, here in the Biennale. We look to use technology to be able to increase the access to the cultural event. We ask artists, museums, and galleries that loan works to the Biennale to help us understand their work and to translate that content into different audio guides that we then provide within the exhibition so that anyone can listen to that content and so that people with visual impairments, for instance, can still enjoy the content. We have been able to create, uh, record this content in video format using sign language interpreters so that they are also available for people with auditory disabilities. We have different types of mediums, such as performance art. And so we also provide audio descriptions and subtitles so that they can be appreciated with people, by people with different types of disabilities. In the next slide, we can see the parallel activities that we carry out during the Biennale. We have a cinema cycle that has six to eight uh, films where people or actors with disabilities are included in the films. So that these films are also accessible to the audience as well as the physical access to the cinema. We have subtitles and audio descriptions of the movies so that people with visual disabilities can also enjoy them as well as people with auditory disabilities can listen to the subtitles. That way, when listening to the audio description, someone with a visual disability is able to enjoy that movie in the fullest way possible as anyone else in the audience. In the next slide, we can see... Sorry, we'll pass to the next slide once again. We can see a group of performers a, a group of people who are working, sorry, on the wrong side, a group of people who are working with the exhibition. We also look to make sure that people can participate in these events. Those people who work as guides at these events are trained on working with people with disabilities so that we can adapt the content to all of the needs of the different audience members. We also have guided visits that include sign language interpreters so that we can provide greater enjoyment for people with auditory disabilities. In the following slide, we have an image of one of the dance recitals that we have that shows the performers. And it shows that one of the elements that we like to incorporate is incorporating actors or dancers who also have disabilities. And we make sure that all of these performances are also accessible by, again, providing that audio description 
so people can listen to an audio description it live that it goes describing the performance that we are witnessing. We also provide subtitles for the performances broadcast above the stage. This is also that people with disabilities uh, can appreciate the arts. We also look to have performance with disabilities uh, participate in the works. In the next slide, we show some of the people who have worked so that this has not been a job that has been working on a bubble on its own. The only time that we have not carried out the Biennale was during the pandemic. We have worked with several different public and private sector organizations to carry out different parallel events. For example, the Sofia, Reina Sofia Museum works with our commi uh, committees and the directors of different museums uh, in Spain and the royal family. If we have the participation of all of these different organizations, then we will be able to have a greater reach. But if we can also participate with different organizations who don't have anything to do with the world of disability, that can show just how powerful a message we can, we can uh, transmit by growing our reach beyond the community. You can see here some of the people who have participated in our event. It'll be from the 25th of October it, to the 29th of January. We also work with different uh, seats uh, for the performance of this Biennale. We will be working with La Casa de Incendia, the Cinematic Arts Foundation, and the National Traumatic Arts Center. It's important to continue to learn and to reach a greater public audience, because that way we can reach and achieve excellence. So I'm looking forward to learning about different experiences and best practices. We're going to continue to learn about the experiences of our panelists in the next session. First, we have Karia Werner, who is an advocate for inclusion and a founder of Escola de Gente. She is specialist in communications from the Rio de Janeiro University, and she also worked with the Osvaldo Cruz Foundation. She has published materials on accessibility in several different languages. She is a columnist for the País uh, Media in Brazil, and she will be talking about Benca, the application for accessible culture in Brazil, which includes events, cultural events, and all different sorts of uh, activities taking place. Please, Claudio, go ahead. Thank you very much, Sonia, for that introduction. My name is Claudia Bernecke. I am a writer and activist. I work at Escola de Gente on inclusion. It is an NGO that I created 20 years ago. Escola de Gente is our name for two reasons. First, because we closely file, follow all people, and we don't believe in any type of discrimination based on inequalities or differences. Second, we train youth on the concept and practice of being an inclusive society. It is our main strategy to be able to hold a wide offering of communication means. There are three inspirations for our work. First, that the most serious forms of discrimination occur during processes of communication. This is due to the shortage or complete lack of accessibility. Then we also believe that it's impossible to practice inclusion without transforming communication. Furthermore, it's impossible to transform communication without the support of digital technology. What is our main challenge? How can we mobilize the, moon, um, with the world of ICT in order to collaborate in these inclusive processes? 
2019, Escola de Gente launched the first Brazilian accessible culture platform. It is a platform that is fully accessible, of course. It was a historic success. Why? Because less than 5% of applications have any type of accessibility, accessibility incorporated. Second, according to the internet management communities, 99% of the Brazilian population over the age of 10 uses their mobile phone as the principal means to connect to the internet. 53% of that population only accesses the internet via their telephone. And this is mainly particularly true in poorer sections of society. And so what is, is BEMCA? BEMCA provides free access to accessible culture it offers connections to entertainment through and by mentioning the different types of accessibility on offer, subtitles, uh, sign language, and accessibility, physical accessibility to locations. In BEMCA, people with disabilities and others can already see what accessibility features are available at different events throughout Brazil. BEMCA is and will always be fully free to users. It is an accessibility platform by the Escuela de Xente. It More than 80% of the world population with disabilities lives in poor areas of developing countries. The story behind Vimca. Vimca was launched at the end of 2019. 2019. In January 2020, we created a promotional campaign uh, at the beginning of COVID-19 to draw attention to the app. We went into full lockdown due to COVID. And so cultural life was put on hold. And the journey of Vemka was also put on hold because we were only able at that point to record uh, in-person events. And yet, at the end of the day, the pandemic was fundamental to transforming our platform. The lockdown meant that Escola de Xente saw that people with disabilities were having to face the greatest isolation that they've had so far, especially when we're talking about those sectors of populations that were living in rural areas where they were already suffering from lack of connectivity before the pandemic. And so why it happened? Because when the flow of information from in-person events began, what happened? We found a virtual world that erupted with all sorts of accessibility, with sign language, with subtitles. These were being produced by the OMS even. And so as a consequence, it, people with disabilities were unable to access information unless all of these accessibilities uh, functions were included, even when we're talking about information about how to protect themselves about COVID-19. So they were once again victimized. So seeing this situation, BEMCA, with all of its accessibility features that were already incorporated, it became an essential app. And so though we had this cultural uh, feature as our initial founding moment, we were able to become a, co a communication for the public space. And we were able to develop local connections. BEMCA 
was previously just a cultural app became a connection for knowledge for it was relaunched in 2021 as an entire platform for interaction with two new functions first it had a record of virtual and in-person events with accessibility features, as well as academic sources, books, courses, everything. Now you can look at 24 different types of events that, and with 12 different types of accessibility features. And these are events throughout the country, in-person events, hybrid events, or virtual events. Then we've also created a database of professionals that provide accessibility services, such as descriptions, subtitles, sign language. Therefore, getting over that false belief that it is hard to find accessibility professionals. Today's figures, we have had 21,000 downloads. More than 900 activities have been registered on this app. We have more than 600 users on average per month. And we have done 14 updates through Android and Apple stores. And we have solved or made 75 different bug fixes to the app. The, our vision of the future. We want to make Vemka a worldwide reference in terms of accessible applications. Our specific objectives, I'm sorry, the, we want to make Vemka the main interaction platform for professionals in the accessibility sector. We also want to achieve certain specific goals, such as creating the VEMCA network and bringing our methodology to be able to create accessibility promotion agents, or APA. This is an award-winning team that has been recognized by Zero Project that was part of the Impact Transfer Program. And so with these projects between APA and Benka, we want to make a greater social impact. This is what we want to do with Benka. We also are going to go to the National Congress of Brazil. You can see on the photo here when we made our visit to the Congress. We want to become, uh, grow our relationships with different universities and create a new generation of professionals that are specialized in ICT and accessibility. We also want to make sure that the MEMCA can be self-sufficient through monetization of its spaces and uh, donations. We want BEMCA to be an example of where people with and without disabilities can interact and create connections together. The objective is to have a positive impact and overcome that digital exclusion and unemployment. In 2021, the UN recognized BEMCA as one of the best or top 400 best practices in the world in terms of its sustainable development goals. In 2022, we were also awarded by Zero Project, which is why we are here today. Escola de Gente works or continues to work so that the legacy the positive legacy that comes out of the pandemic is that it, we achieve a digital world that is democratic, inclusive, free, and free of all barriers as well. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Claudia. I agree with you. We need to have this information about the cultural resources that are accessible and about the sustainability of the project that you have presented us. Congratulations. Now we're going to give our warm welcome to Francisca Florenzano, she's a sociologist. She's, a, she's got a master's degree by the London School of Political Science. And also she's got a degree in the University of Cambridge. And also she's got a PhD in from the University of Chile. And also she's the current uh, director of Corpartes Foundation. She's got experience in public policies, uh, community and social development, mental health, and matters related to cultural and arts. Four times she's been uh, recognized by uh, in Chile as one of the the 100, 100 leaders in that country. She's going to share with us the work uh, performed by the Fundación Corpartes. And thank you, Francisca, for being here with us. The floor is yours. Thank you, Sonia, for that presentation. And thank you all for this instance to share the work that we do in Fundación Corpartes. Corpartes is a foundation, a private foundation, nonprofit uh, foundation, and its main objective uh, for 16 years it's been to provide and to open an opportunity access of the best of the arts for everybody. This challenge takes a place in two different work lines, which are very important. The first work line is that it's that in Chile, we wanted to bring to Chile some disciplines, some arts that because of our condition as a country, being part of the third world and being an isolated uh, country, these were artistic disciplines and also on stage um, deployments that hardly that could hardly ever come to the country, and that was the main objective. And after some time when uh, of doing these, we realized that the the heart or the core of our foundation was to open the real access lived access and felt access of these artistic manifestations to everybody. That's wh why our main idea is, that, that is our main challenge, is the best of the arts for everybody. And that's where I want to focus my presentation for you. The great questions that we asked ourselves is how do we develop a cultural sector where there are no access barriers for people? And I'm not only talking about the ones that I've just mentioned in terms of come, of bringing to our country these uh, artistic um, presentations or works that didn't come in the past, but we need to overcome those barriers. We need to, and sometimes we do not realize these barriers exist and that do not allow culture and arts reach people according to their realities and according to their needs. That's why in the objective of this um, foundation, which is Corpartes Foundation, in our mission and in our vision, we and also in our strategic objectives, we see the relevance that opening and widening the access to culture and to art, it should mean that in each one of these works, in each one of these new projects we provide and we measure quantitatively and qualitatively the possibility of open these options for new audiences that may enjoy this in a, in a very open way, uh, enjoy these new proposals that we are bringing. Why? That's the question that we are asking ourselves. And I know that the other foundations, the other initiatives that are sharing this panel are also wondering about this. Basically, it's because there is no society and there is not individual and there are no communities that can reach an, 
um, a, a development, a whole development. Uh, when we are talking about this in a, like in a, as a whole, if we cannot, if we are not able to open all the spectrum that arts and culture bring us for a social community and individual development. That's why our foundation is based on the access to art and culture, which is a human right and also is based on the development of the human being in all its aspects with a tridimensional uh, model where we consider why is it necessary, as we say, to breathe in each one of our initiatives that issue about a, a complete accessibility to all the groups of people in which it, it's our main uh, concern, the best of the art for everybody. And we have to do this for in each one of our works and proposals. It's a human right. It's part of the development of, of people. And that's why we have to consider a relevant aspect that any form of barrier that halts the access and participation of people and communities to the cultural processes and the cultural ecosystems will inhibit the development of the society and it will inhibit an inclusive democracy. Because of this, for six years, Colpartes has considered that for each one of the concerts, for each one of the plays in terms of the works or the music works or the uh, plastic works, we develop inspired and supported by technology as well, because without technology, it is very difficult or even impossible to, to take these steps. The accessibility for a person who is who suffers from any kind of disability that might be physical or cognitive or any other kind, so they do not have any kind of barriers to enjoy, to participate, or also to be an actor or part of those works in our cultural center or in the work that we do for the communities. We have some examples here for the access to our cultural center is totally enabled in physical terms for people for any kind of physical disability so they can have access without any kind of barrier or limitation, something that may sound basic, but we understand that in large cities and in many countries, and even here in Santiago today, to commute or to travel in the city is very hard for many people. We also have audio systems in which blind people or uh, uh, people with certain uh, sight uh, impairment, they walk around our uh, center that has a lot of uh, work, such as sculptures, such as uh, paintings, or and even if they have any kind of hearing disability or visual disability, they can also enjoy from all aspects offered by the cultural center, although that's not something as specific. Also, we have some um, supports, for example, before a, a play, for those who can see, they can touch how, what's the, um, how the actors are and the actresses are, they can also touch their uh, clothes before the, the play starts. So once they are in the room, they can have this element so they can enjoy this play in a better way. Also in our annual um, pro uh, agenda, we also have included the uh, disability um, issue in, in an opposite way. 
that we are the people who are the ones who can see are the ones who have to join that world of those who cannot see. About the use of technology, we started to adapt before pandemic. We realized that this access um, issue and this thing of uh, overriding the barriers that are physical barriers in terms of uh, physical disabilities and also in terms of cognitive disabilities and also these barriers considering how do how we how could we reach these rural areas people who couldn't come to our cultural center and we also work with migrant communities we also we work with uh, um, in person uh, communities, and this use of technology allowed us to progress, trying to reduce those barriers. Slowly, before pandemic and with after pandemic or with pandemic, we had an explosion in which poor corporates took all their physical uh, programs to the digital world. And the development that we had had before and the support that we had had from the technology that was mainly seen from a perspective of opening the access to certain groups that have a certain type of disability that was even um, made bigger in order to allow all groups to that faced all these difficulties in pandemic and also, we wanted to strengthen and to reiterate that the, this is the path, the way to continue struggling for this, that is, this struggle is based on the human rights. It's also based in terms of the whole development of all people, of complete development of all people, regardless of their economic situation, regardless of where they live, regardless of their physical um, disabilities, regardless of their um, income. So they could have reached the development where culture and art plays an important role. And that is that goes, or we can see this from the point of our capacity as a society and the role of culture and the role of the um, information technologies that play a very important role. And we should be able to use them in the right way. And also, we have to consider this robust change that we all live. And here, there is now this tension because of the pandemic that is still there. And I shared with you this scheme that you can see in this slide that we have integrated as our as the foundation in terms of making a comparison between the challenge that we had as a sector in an allegoed time in terms of opening the acts for the access and participation, how we saw this before pandemic in a digital era where technology was very important for access and participation in order to integrate groups that had been excluded and that had no chance to be uh, to participate in the world of culture and also to receive a benefit of all the aspects of arts and culture in the society and how we we move to a new stage to a new moment and this is our reflection as a foundi as, as a foundation and this is the covid times that state something different something different to what we had considered would be the change between an analog era and a digital area. And that, that's where at the point where we are developing this, where we are bringing new initiatives, different works that have challenged us that after March 15, 2020, when we had to close our cultural center and just one week ago, we opened that again. And we are expecting to be stronger and to have more in a better integration of all the human beings living in this earth and that nobody feels and nobody is excluded of all the contribution the art and culture may bring it's not only to guarantee the best of the arts it's not only to say or to tell chile and latin america we bring 
the best of the arts or we develop the best of the arts in our own countries. But it's also to say so proudly that we guarantee that we are relevant actors in, and everybody has access to our, to that culture. And also we develop a society, we develop people, our children that are the future and all the people who inhabit our earth. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Francisca. It was so interesting, everything that you were talking about in terms of creating those cultural offerings that are accessible and that you take advantage of technology to do so. We're going to welcome Alexandra Jensen, who funded a subreader at, sub at 18 years old. It reads subtitles out loud for dyslexic users. Today, it can be used for cinema, Netflix, Disney Plus, and there are more than 150,000 people using it with uh, reading difficulties. Alexandra, can you tell us a bit more, please? Hi, my name is Alexander. I'm one of the founders of uh, Subreader, which is a Danish startup that um, offers spoken subtitles for people with reading difficulties. So that might be people with dyslexia or visual impairments or other disabilities that makes it difficult to read the subtitles or understand movies that are not in your own language. So that, given that, for example, I'm from Denmark, a lot of people here, they struggle with the French movies or English movies. So what Subreader does is that it provides a translation of the movie through an app. And the reason I started Subreader uh, back a few years back is actually because my brother has dyslexia himself. So that means that whenever we've been watching a movie at home, uh, my mom has always been reading the subtitles aloud for my brother, but also for me and for the rest of the family. And that's frankly quite annoying. So you can maybe imagine watching Lord of the Rings with your mom's voice in the background for almost three hours that gets quite annoying. So we ended up not watching that, uh, as many movies as we wanted to. And that's the reason that I uh, started Subreader and actually developed an app that could uh, translate the movie for my little brother so he could watch movies in any languages and get them translated to Danish. And that, that also means that he can watch a movie with his friends and then still understand and laugh whenever uh, anyone else laughs. And the way it works is that um, you just have a pair of headphones in your ear and then you download our app on your phone. And that will then integrate with, for example, Netflix or Disney Plus or any of the cinemas that have bought a system. And then you can simply just sit back and enjoy the movie as everyone else in the cinema or that you're watching the movie with. So the whole idea is that people are able to consume and watch movies and TV shows on the same terms and equal terms as everyone else without being stigmatized. And um, today, uh, this is actually quite a big far in Denmark, but in Europe alone, there's almost 52 million uh, people with dyslexia who have difficulties with reading. And uh, in South America as well, and in Latin America, the number is probably bigger because they uh, have an alphabetics and also other groups of people who never learned to read. And this constitutes a very big uh, problem for people whenever they want to watch a movie in the cinema, if they want to watch the new Harry Potter or uh, any other movie in English. So um, I thought my brother initially was the only one with dyslexia, but after I started working on the project, I realized that it's actually yeah, seven to 10% of any given population that, um, that suffers from dyslexia and, and therefore have difficulties with reading. So the way that Subreader works is that um, you download an app on your phone, and then we have uh, integrations with a bunch of different streaming services. So that might be Netflix, that might be Disney Plus, that might be HBO Max. In Scandinavia, we also have some other streaming services that we, we offer. And then in the app, you, uh, you'll be able to search for the movie that you're about to watch on your TV or on your computer or iPad or wherever you're watching it. And then our app, our platform will search across all the different streaming services that we, uh, we integrate with. And then you can simply just select, might be Lord of the Rings, might be Harry Potter or James Bond in our app. And then on the TV or where you're watching it, you just simply start the movie. And in our app, you press play. And then we have some um, audio synchronization algorithms that listens to the audio from your TV or where you're watching it from. And then it completely automatically synchronizes the translation of the movie uh, by simply listening to the, to the audio. 
So that makes it really easy to use for, for people with different disabilities um, and also makes it quick and easy for, for anyone who needs to use it to, uh, to, yeah, to understand the movie. And as I said before, the, the whole idea is that people are able to use this service with, without having to go through too much struggle and without having to annoy other people. So um, what, what, what you still needs to do is just download our app, use a pair of headphones, might be a pair of AirPods or, or other headphones that you have. And then you just find the movie that you're about to watch and then it synchronizes automatically. The app is built quite uh, smart because we actually support more than 30 languages. So whenever we receive some subtitles in, in a language that we have a, a voice for, then we can read them aloud. So that, that also applies for Spanish or for any other language uh, that might be in the, in the South American area. Um, and that also enables us to expand to other regions really, uh, really fast. The only thing we need is actually the, the integrations with the local streaming services so that we can provide the movies that are available in that region. Um, the way it works in the cinema is also is, is slightly different. The cinemas, they buy a small server from us that they install uh, back with their DCP. And then whenever the movie is played in the cinema, then we automatically receive the subtitles from the cinema. And uh, as a user, you just download our app again. It's the same app. And then uh, before you enter the screen or the room where you're watching the movie, there'll be a QR code outside. Uh, it's typically it's placed on the door and in the QR code, uh, you can find our logo as well. And then through our app, you just scan that QR code and then you are connected to the movie that you're about to watch. That means that whenever the movie starts playing, it will automatically be read aloud through your phone. So you don't need to do anything else than just uh, scan this QR code. And um, so today we actually have three different areas where Subreader can be used. As I mentioned, we have Subreader Cinema where you scan this QR code and the cinemas, they buy the system from us. It's completely free for everyone to use as long as the, system, uh, as the cinema has, has the system installed. Then we have a school product, which is a product that schools or municipalities can buy from us. And um, for this product, we integrate with different educational streaming services. So that might you, you might be in, in an educational environment and you have to watch a movie in a foreign language. And people with disabilities, they might be on uh, unequal terms because they have difficulties with reading the subtitles. So with our school solution, those students can just use our app and then they will get the, the movie translated and they can participate in the following educational uh, process as well. Then finally, we have the Subreader Home version, which is uh, the integrations we have with all the biggest streaming services like Netflix and Disney Plus. And uh, that's that works the way I explained uh, previously. And um, you simply just need to download the app. And then we have a small subscription fee of around six US dollars a month, um, which gives you access to all of our content. And then where we are today is that uh, we have more than 200 schools using Subreader. That's primarily in Denmark. Then we have more than 125 cinemas who have bought our system and operates it today. Um, that's, we, we actually have 80% of all the Danish cinemas. And then we have around 40% uh, of all the Swedish cinemas, and, and we continue to get more uh, new cinemas uh, on a regular basis. And then every day we read more than 300 hours of subtitles aloud for our users. Um, and that's actually quite a lot of movie watching uh, when you think about it. We actually have more than 125,000 uh, dyslexics or primarily dyslexic people who, uh, who have downloaded our app and, uh, and have used it to a, to a certain extent. So um, that was it for my presentation. Um, I hope you all enjoyed. And if you have any questions, then please let me know. Thank you, Alexander. It's inspiring how from this idea to help a person, you get this technological solution that also becomes a company that creates solutions. Congratulations for that. We are going to give a warm welcome to Stefan Leblanc. He is the Alliance creator of Development 500, where he creates bonds with the um, disability community and also the people from Valuable 500. He's been working for many years in the disability world in many uh, fields, such as employment, such as uh, uh, inclusive design. He also has a master's degree from Boston, and also he will help us in the development of these, in the, in, for example, in the world of the arts. Welcome, Stefan. The world is yours. Thank you, Sonia, for that uh, kind introduction. Hello, everyone. 
My name is Stefan Lavoie. I'm the Director of Partnerships at the Valuable 500. And today we'll, we will be uh, discussing innovations and leadership in the business community as it relates to access to culture. Um, I've prepared a few slides for you, uh, but first, before we get into different um, topics and certainly different examples of uh, leadership and innovation, um, let's first talk about who we are. So the Valuable 500 is a global business collective made up of 500 businesses and 500 CEOs at those businesses that are all moving individually and together um, towards creating a more um, uh, disability inclusive and accessible business community. Um, together, we have quite a, a quite a large presence. So we, you know, we have 500 companies representing two, 22 million employees around the world, across 64 sectors and industries, um, and uh, that are based in 41 countries. Um, and so together, these 500 companies uh, uh, are leveraging their global influence and the scale of their companies uh, to create systems change. And so when we think about how that system change is realized, uh, we have what we call our transformation program, which is a uh, six step transformation um, wheel as you'll see on the screen. And for those of you uh, who may not be able to see it, uh, what we have represented on the screen is a wheel, uh, almost, it almost looks like a wheel of cheese cut into six different uh, sections. We have a section that's called C-suite and that transformation area is related to helping business leaders uh, reconsider or reconceive how to think about disability and how to prioritize that in their disability in their business strategy. We have culture, which looks at not only culture as we've defined it, as my colleagues on this panel have defined it, um, but also looks at workplace culture. So how um, businesses consider um, disability inclusion in the workplace. Uh, we also have customers, so looking at how customer experiences are considered. Um, are they accessible? Are they disability inclusive? We also have represent, representation and research, or sorry, research and reporting, which really looks at how businesses um, around the world uh, collect data on disability, uh, both internally and externally, and how they use that data to improve their business practice, uh, again, for, for their internal stakeholders and improve um, the customer service experience for their external stakeholders. And lastly, we have representation. So how uh, does disability figure in all external representation of that business? So that could be in public relations, that can be in branding or advertising campaigns, uh, that can be in, in imagery, um, that can be in, in film and so on and so forth. So how does disability figure there? Um, and I'd like to, the reason why I put this transformation program on uh, this presentation is to really consider how business can use this transformation program to, or how a business can use this transformation program to transform its individual practices and its individual goals but then in turn impact the greater community and impact access to, among other things, cultural experiences. Um, and so um, I'd like to share a couple of examples of businesses that have done this uh, quite well, beginning with, um, and these are all businesses that are part of our global collective. And the thing that these businesses have in common, actually there are three, three big things that they have in common. The first, is these initiatives that I'll talk about here in a second um, are a result, a direct result of uh, leadership initiatives. So these are these are uh, initiatives that were um, uh, started and um, sponsored by folks at the highest leadership levels and listed as a priority in their business strategy. This isn't something that. Um, these businesses chose to do because it's, you know, it's the, it's the right thing to do, but because it's the smart thing to do. They wanted to include this as part of their overall business offering and their long-term strategy. The second thing is, you know, all of these businesses did um, uh, implemented these programs uh, in large part with the support of internal stakeholders. So it's really, you know, it's the managers, it's their employees that drove change 
and that um, and that led many of these programs. And lastly, um, these internal stakeholders also worked with external groups. So actually reaching out to the community, the disability community to get expertise, get advice on how to do all of these things. Um, those are the hallmarks of a successful, those are kind of the, the, the pillars of a successful disability inclusion strategy in business. And I think this can be translated to any, kind, any other kind of context, whether you're working in a public sector um, uh, uh, department or whether you're working in government or whether you're working in a museum or an art gallery or a music venue or any other kind of cultural venue. Leading, you know, leading with disability, making sure to, to listen to your people and engage your internal stakeholders and also engaging with external groups to make sure that you're, um, that you're doing things properly. Those are the three big pillars to, to, to remember from this conversation. And so I'll start with what Airbnb has done um, in, in making their offerings more accessible and in turn making some of their kind of uh, uh, improving the customer experience for their uh, cons uh, consumers. So this was a few years ago. They actually um, partnered with several disability organizations from around the world to um, create um, a accessibility guide for the hosts of their experiences. Uh, so they had already done quite a lot of work in, um, in educating their, the hosts of their uh, lodging, um, lodging facilities and, and of their homes uh, to, uh, on, on accessibility and the importance of accessibility. But here they decided to launch um, the same initiative in their experiences. So having the hosts of their experiences, whether it's a food tour, whether it's um, uh, adaptive sports or whatever, um, educating them on the different issues that may face different disability groups as they try to experience these things. And at the same time, they also made sure that on the front end, their customer journey throughout their website was, um, was accessible and also had search filters that would include accessible experiences and would mark out the, the, the organizations and the hosts that, um, that had undergone or that had you know, received the guide and had um, uh, gained access to this accessibility training. ITV is another organization that's done phenomenal work in this area, particularly around representation of disability um, in broadcasting. So they are among um, a couple of different broadcasters in the UK that have really focused on um, developing, um, uh, making sure that disability representation is at the focal point of their, of their disability inclusion strategy. Lastly, uh, Comcast NBC Universal has done phenomenal work in making sure that they're techn technologically, um, they are accessible to users of all disabilities um, and have also uh, made sure that their, um, that their recreation areas, that their uh, in-person um, offerings are accessible, including Universal Studios and their Comcast Center. Uh, I am unfortunately out of time, but uh, if you'd like to, any more information, um, I will make sure to get my, uh, my um, uh, contact information to you um, as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan, for your presentation and all the inter interesting things you have told us about. Thank you so much. Now we are going to start with the questions panel where we are going to have all our speakers. I'm going to start with Claudia. Claudia, is there any expansion plan in the region of Benca of the, in this application for the accessible culture in the long and in the midterm? Yes, we want to find a sustainable way to expand Venka in Latin America and in the world. We have two main challenges. First is to guarantee the sustainability, the financial sustainability of Venka, because we don't want the users pay to pay for anything. Because for us, for the Scola di Gente, the uh, free access, its accessibility. And the other challenge that we have that is very important for us is to have the 
the possibility of the ability to invest in Venka development to continue with the um, continuous progress in terms of technology of the smartphones because they they have they advance in at a very very high speed thank you for that question in this world that progresses in a very very fast way it's very important to look forward to look for the future francisca the floor is yours now and the question is Considering that in Chile, we have a new administration, do you think it is possible to create this joint work that will allow us to have a society that is more accessible in terms of culture? What are the steps to follow in this sense? I'm sorry, we couldn't hear you before. Yes, we have a great challenge as a country, and in, it comes on two sides. So first, today, the world of arts and culture has an underdevelopment and under uh, financing that is very important. So in this sense, everything related to accessibility, if we can advance in these for everybody, those who are related to the arts and culture, it's an important uh, step. And having said this, we always expect to achieve these goals. And we have this proposal for the new administration. And we are going to look in, for in as, and what we have done as the Corpartes Foundation is not only to talk with the Ministry of Arts and Culture about our projects, but also we want to work with the National Services on Disabilities and the Ministry of Social Development, because this way we can join these three entities and we can progress in this. In with a ministry and with this development area, they contribute not with their point of view and we can do something bigger. And we are convinced that we will progress in a good manner with the new administration because it's a social challenge and we have to be together with the world of the arts and culture, with the world of the social development and the world of the disability ministry and all those who want to join us. Thank you so much, Francisca. It is true to uh, have this cross-sectional um, way of working and we cannot forget about how to uh, use them to reach our objectives. Alexander, we want to know if you may think that it's possible to have any kind of uh, alliances with HBO Max and, and Netflix and all these uh, streaming um, platforms so we can have a massive use of this app. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good scenario. And uh, that's, that's exactly what we are, what we are working on uh, in Subreader at the moment, actually. Uh, when we built the platform from the beginning, we already took into account that uh, it would be used in other countries and other regions of the world than uh, in Denmark. That's also why we included a text-to-speech repository of more than 30 languages, which means that we, we quickly can expand to new markets and to new languages and to new cultures. Um, the, only re the only thing we need is actually access to the content in the local region, and that's where these different streaming services are uh, essential for us to actually move into those regions. So um, for us to go into the, to the Latin American region and the South American region, uh, we would have to have these integrations uh, applied to the regional departments of, of the different streaming services. We already have integrations in place with uh, Netflix and Disney Plus for Scandinavia, but we, we would need to apply the same agreement or the same integration with, uh, with their content for the South American and Latin American market. And once that's done, we can actually expand into that region uh, within a few weeks almost. Um, and then it's all a matter of, of how we can get the word out to, uh, to the population that, that this is an opportunity for them to use. And the same applies for the cinemas. Uh, our solution today actually already supports uh, cinemas in that region. The only thing they need to do is actually install our small server and then they're ready to go. So um, that can be done in a matter of days. Thank you very much for the question. Muchas gracias, Alexander. Muchas gracias por ser emprendedor. Thank you so much for that. Thank you so much for being an entrepreneur and for continuing progressing. And in, in order to 
end with this uh, round of questions, uh, Stefan, would, I would like to know how these uh, initiatives of Escola de Gente or Subreddit may reach private institutions in order to allow the funding for the sustainability of the projects? So thank you for that question. Um, I think that there are many ways that um, businesses can can partner with um, organizations such as Escola de Gente or, or Subreader. Um, I think it really depends on the, the sector of the business. Um, it depends on um, what their giving priorities are if they have a foundation um, and certainly what geographic interest they may have. So, um, you know, depending on where organizations uh, like these two are based, I think that's a huge factor, um, or where they do work is a huge factor, um, because you want to align your goals or your activities as much as possible to the interests of the business. Um, approaching a business that does not have necessarily a tie to the type of activity that you're engaged in, um, it'll be very hard to convince them to, to provide you with funding or any kind of support. So make sure to do your research, understand where they operate, understand you know, what their um, uh, funding priorities are for the CSR or foundation activities and, um, and reach out accordingly. Thank you so much, Stefan. Great ideas about this accessible uh, culture. They need the support and we need them to be sustainable. It's important to involve people that, Im Im that have them or as part of their financing strategies. Thank you to all the speakers who have joined us and all the audience of this session. I just want to tell you four things as a take home message, how pandemic has helped us to evolve, to solve problems in a fast uh, way or in a faster way. Uh, something that could have taken us years, it took us months. Culture helps us to override barriers, things, uh, negative things such as the, the abusive use of mobiles. It's a tool for creating this accessible culture and it's important to have this sustainability in the um, ideas that will lead us to sustainability if we obey what Einstein said the mind that opens to a new idea never reaches its original size in our minds all those who have been here are open for and consider the culture to be accessible that's what we have to follow from now 